everyone. Welcome back. Um, Lindsay is out this week, but I have my husband Seth in today. Oliver's dad. Seth, say hello. Hello. <laughs> so, um, today we're gonna just talk a little bit about dad life. I know we usually talk about mom life or talk from the mom perspective. So, first... Seth, do you want to go ahead and just, like, introduce yourself and tell everyone a little bit about your life and what you do and all that? Uh, I'm Seth, and yeah, I'm married to Lauren, and I am Oliver's dad, and I kill bugs for a living, and then I come home and hang out with you guys. We're in a band together, which oh, I've yeah, mentioned before. Yep. Okay. Cool. Um... Do you want to tell the story of how we met? Well, we met the first time because you dated some kid on my soccer team and I didn't really think anything of it, but... <laughs> Scandal. We, we became reacclimated at a mutual friend's birthday party. I was like, oh dang, she fly. And now we're here. <laughs> awesome. <laughs> Pretty good sums it up, I suppose. And when did we start dating? 2000. God, what are the years when you're old? It's been, we're almost five years ago. Yeah, so 2014. 14, that's the one. Yeah. And then we've been married approximately two and a half years. And we had Oliver. January 1st, 2018. So that's our life timeline. In case anyone needed it. <laughs> um, but yeah, I'm just going to ask us some questions. Um, <laughs> so, first thing. Being a dad, what is one thing that you wish people understood better? Whether it's like moms or people who don't have kids at all. What do you wish people would understand about dad life? Um... Well, I think it goes to anybody who doesn't have kids. They don't understand that you can't just go out and do something or just go meet them somewhere for whatever. You can't just stop what you're doing to go hang out with somebody if they want to. Yeah. That's, yeah. <laughs> people people don't, don't seem to get it. Guys don't get it. Yeah. Yeah, because that's one thing that, like, I think was hard adjustment for me because like women do get it. I mean, I still get questions from some of my girlfriends that are like wanting to know if I want to go do something that I'm like, yeah, either I can't bring my child to that or I don't particularly want to bring my child to that. But mostly with women, they think about it. I feel like even if they don't have kids, but men, it like doesn't seem to even cross their minds. We're just wired differently. Don't even. <laughs> wired, conditioned. No, I, I don't, yeah, I don't know. I just, I guess until you have a kid, you just don't really realize how different it is. But do you think it's like just naivety or do you think it's a little bit of like maybe with guys, that might, they might not be thinking this intentionally, but do you think maybe with guys a lot of the time they kind of subconsciously just assume that the mom will deal with things? That wouldn't surprise me. I mean, that that can be the mentality sometimes. Yeah, it kind I it definitely it definitely can. I don't it's not to be like men suck. It um do. <laughs> It's just they don't think about it that way and I think a lot of this I sh think we shared a post on Swearing Mamas the other day on Facebook about that feeling of like being on the outside as a new mother when you're like at a restaurant or a party or some event and you're stuck tending to your child who's being difficult or even if they're not being difficult but they just need to be held or whatever the situation may be and I think that the situations where I felt that the most were more in like male dominated situations it seemed like so much easier to just pass the baby off not not shade on you just like when when there's more guys there they don't think to be like oh can i hold him or it's like women are like here let me hold him so you can you know eat or whatever go to the bathroom or whatever yeah okay 
Cool. Well, how do you think it's a different experience being a dad, being a mom, either, both in general, but also like between you and me specifically? Um, well, I don't have boobs, so that's... Unfortunate. A, a, a pretty, you know, I mean that... Useless nipples. <laughs> so, I mean, that, that changes a lot of things, because that's a whole connection and he needs you and blah 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 so I don't experience that and he doesn't need me as much because of that but um yeah just boobs that's that's what immediately comes to mind well you're a guy so boobs of course are the first <laughs> things that goes to mind <laughs> my boobs are in two different I like to say they're in two different hemispheres now from breastfeeding so I don't know if <laughs> I don't know if there's anything positive to say about my <laughs> boobs anymore. <laughs> but they do make milk. Um Yeah, that's a thing. It would be super cool if you could breastfeed on occasion. I, I would if I could. You know? <laughs> I mean you might get some chest hair in his mouth. Oh my god, but, so much know. chest hair. Do you wish you could breastfeed? I've never really thought like, man, I wish I could be breastfeeding right now. But, but are um, you like having some, just for like whenever I've like seen you just like dying and try like nursing Oliver and he's being a pain in the ass. I'm just like, damn, I wish I could just do that for her so she didn't have to deal with this. But like, do you feel like you wish you had the connection or anything? I've never really thought about it. But um. I mean, I guess it would be neat because, like, the, the love hormone is released or whatever. So, I'm sure that's a very special thing. Bonding. Yeah. Special bonding experience. Which you need throughout the day to not take your baby <laughs> to the nearest, what is it, fire station? <laughs> what was that? I don't know. There was a meme. I think I shared it on Sorry Mamas. <laughs> Probably every meme I, I reference is on there. Hmm. They started calling me Big Papa. <laughs> Why? Because so, that's what my friends do. Uh, <laughs> no, I mean, probably. Like, because I, I guess, you know, treat me like I'm a grown-up now, at last. But, um... Or do you ever just feel different, even if they're not treating you differently? Do you ever, like, have those moments where you're like, oh, I'm the parent in the room? Oh, yeah. yeah. Yeah, I have those. Or, like, you're out and everybody's enjoying themselves or whatever, doing something, and you're just thinking, like, I hope Oliver's okay back at home. Oh, uh, yeah, or you kind of miss him a little bit. Yeah. You're like, he was making me curse and cry all day, and now I want to hug him. What is that about? It's not fair. It's not. Not at all. Yeah, and, like, I think one of the, like, a lot of the time I'll f sort of feel like I find myself as a person outside of just being a mom. Because it's really easy to just be, like, only a mom all day long. Like, especially when you're a stay-at-home mom, you don't, like, get dressed up a lot of the time or do your makeup. And your child is styling your hair for you throughout the day. <laughs> and so you look like a mom and you feel like a mom. And then... So it's easy to get lost in that. And then when I go out with my friends, sometimes I'm able to actually like feel like a normal person again. And um, I think like there are just those moments where it gets like yanked out from under you. And like one of them that I was going to mention, this is kind of like maybe I don't know if this is an embarrassing story to you or not. But like we were hanging out with our friends and we were playing this game and... You just basically, like, answer these questions. And one of the questions was, like, ideally in a relationship, how often would you want to have sex with your partner? And all of our younger, like, a few years younger, right, um, unmarried <laughs> friends were, like, every day. And Seth and I were, like, not, not every day. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, and, like, it just, in that moment, like, the people just kind of, their faces... It wasn't, like, a bad reaction, it, but it was just, like, they didn't understand. And I was, like, oh, man. Like, it's so weird to be... Because, like, we have a good sex life. On the record. <laughs> 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 but, 
<laughs> right? Would you say? Uh, yes. And it's like, you know, like I think we're at a good amount, a good level of time, but it's like, what well, that's one of those things after you have a kid, like you're freaking tired and like things like that change and you don't always feel sexy and you don't always feel like, young or cool or any of those things. So I definitely felt really different around a lot of my friends. Yeah. But you actually have at least one, maybe more friends that have recently become dads. Is it just one? Should we plug him? Because he's a blog. Fabian, Fabi Dad. <laughs> Fabi Dad, F A B I D A D. Yeah. Just dot com, is that? I think if you Google that, it would probably come up. It's a blog. He's on Instagram, too. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Go to his Instagram and yes. it'll have links. Lucas is his, is his baby. He's very baby cute. Baby Lucas. So cute. Um, but yeah, so do you guys have like a special bond now? <laughs> no, I mean, he'll sometimes, like, I he. We were back home in Baltimore, and we played a show a couple weeks ago, and he came out to one of them, and we were having a conversation about poop, and that, you know, <laughs> so, I mean, I guess we've had conversations about poop, well, but yeah, anyway, um, so, you know, that was, that was a new thing. He's like, man, I knew babies pooped, but goodness gracious, and blowouts are insane. I was like, tell me about it, <laughs> you know, and he'll, yeah, we'll, we'll text sometimes talking about stuff, but... Oh, I didn't know that. Like, baby stuff? Sometimes. Do you have to, like, fight the urge to be like, just wait? No, because no. you're just not that person. Because how baby Lucas is two months old or three? I'm not a good I, friend. No, I think he's two and change, but I don't. I also keep forgetting what month it is currently. So, <laughs> I think he was born in January, late January. But anyway... Because he was just almost a year behind Oliver. Yeah. So, yeah, I don't know. Um, like, maybe that's just me being petty. Some of my <laughs> friends, some of my friends, though, like, who had babies younger, and they're like, oh, motherhood is amazing, and, like, I'm a goddess, and everything is perfect. I'm like, mm-hmm, mm-hmm. And I'm, like, looking at my imaginary watch on my hand, like, mm-hmm, it's perfect. You don't have that. Because no. you're a nice person. <laughs> I try my best. <sighs> but once you've seen the other side, it's like... Yeah. Things change so much. Oh, show. But it's nice because if he has any questions, you could... Yeah, and that's... I, I told him that, too, when I was kind of drunk. I was like, man, <laughs> if you ever have any <laughs> questions, just text me. He's like, I'm no expert, but I'm doing my best and I'm happy to help. <laughs> yes well that was nice and um i think that with women a lot of us don't ask our friends for help as like a it's like a pride issue sure. well it's like partly a pride thing and especially because like mom is like the like the big like you know it's like a heavy word like it's a big deal you know you're the mom right they don't say that as much about like like when someone's making a decision about anything regarding a newborn they don't say like well what does the dad say they say like what does the mom say they don't even say like what does the parent say a lot of the time they say like what does the mom say which yeah. does that bother you <coughs> no because i mean you're the boss oh god i can't it's fine i he just got me but, one of those um, little desk plaques that says girl boss <laughs> excuse me but um i mean no because most decisions we agree upon so regardless of who they ask they're gonna get the same answer i think so it doesn't really matter yeah okay well that's nice i feel like if i were the dad i would be like this is not equality or something this is sexist this is sexist <laughs> um but i don't know but i mean anyway so like all of that can kind of lead to i think mothers not reaching out which i know i definitely been a little bit guilty of maybe i'm very like choosy about who i will like ask questions to because you kind of like you want your identity as a mom to be like secure like i made this decision because i'm the mom <laughs> you know because i'm smart and educated and i have a good intuition and i'm a good mom versus like if you asked everyone and everyone else told you what to do it i think it can make you feel a little bit like you didn't do enough but yeah. and and then also it's just like so competitive um being a mom is 
But as a dad, I guess you don't have quite as much of that. So like, but do you ever still feel like you don't want to ask anyone else's advice because you just want to like figure it out yourself? I mean, my my first instinct is definitely to figure it out myself, do whatever I, I can to solve the problem. But if it really comes down to it, then yeah, I don't mind asking for help. Who is you, who's the first person you would ask this <laughs> hot question? If you were alone with Oliver and didn't know what to do about something, who's the first person you'd ask? You. Me? Cool. Who's the second if I didn't answer? My mom or my sister? I was super excited to see if you were going to say your mom or your sister. <laughs> you said both. Yeah, I well, I guess probably Samantha because she's still fresh in it since that's George true. Is still you know george is know. not much older than oliver a few months that's my it's our nephew so cute but, um yeah that's probably where i would go for that okay very cool very cool so my phone screen went black okay there it goes what has been one of your favorite moments of parenting thus far? Oh, man, oh, man. There's so many little things sprinkled throughout the last year and change. It's hard to... Yeah, you can say a few if you want little things. I just, you don't I, have that I big... think in general, just watching him fall in love with music is pretty freaking cool. It is. Like... I put the tom and the snare both on the floor in the music room. And he was <laughs> using both drumsticks with both hands, hitting both of them. Like, he's, he's got it figured out. It's pretty... It's exciting. It is. And I feel like whenever I talk about Oliver... Because he, he will do that, and he'll also... What we call singing at the same time, which <laughs> is... It's more like... Ah, 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 ah. So I call it punk singing. But... I think, like, when I tell people that, I always think they must assume that we, like, taught him that or that we're, like, trying to... Because if I saw, like, a little kid, like, obsessed with football or something, I would be like, oh, that parent just wants him to be a football player. Right. But we actually have, like, never shown him how to drum at all. He's just watched us and he's watched our band and done it himself, which is, like, super cool, Um, I think. Yeah. Do you think that he, like, had the love in his veins, or do you think he, like, l just learned it watching us? Well, I don't know, because, I mean, we went to a few concerts and played a few concerts while you were pregnant. Oh, yeah. So, I, he, you know, he was... We met the Shins when I was pregnant. Do you think James Mercer blessed my Probably. <laughs> I, it would not surprise me. I think he does possess magical powers. <laughs> I'm going to send him this episode, and I hope you like <laughs> He also has kids, so I mean, and all girls, so. But none of them young enough for Oliver to marry one day, sadly. Age is just a number. <laughs> okay, it's a little weird right now. It's getting a little weird in this room. <laughs> Any other super cool um, parenting moments that you've experienced huh? that you like a lot? Well, it was like a week or two ago. This isn't anything crazy, but I came home from work. And he's smiling, hi, Dada. And then he crawled right over and he, like, hugged my leg. <laughs> and that was the, like, first time that he, like, came to me when I got home from work. Aww. So that that was cute. That was cool. He's also super into what right now? Tell our listeners what he's doing right now. He likes to bark. <laughs> <laughs> woof, woof. Yeah, woof, 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 woof. <laughs> I, we went on a walk earlier and there was a dog. I said, look, there's a doggy, Oliver. And he's just, woof. <laughs> and he started waving. <laughs> he waves at the dog. That's the best part. Yeah. It's, so it's pure. Great. So pure. And my parents have a dog. Well, she technically was my dog, but my parents ended up keeping her. But her name is Cha-Cha. <laughs> and he goes, Cha-Cha. <laughs> Any time he hears or sees my... Pause. Yeah, my mother-in-law. Oh, yeah. No, yeah, but no, he, she's got like, Cha-Cha. <laughs> the second my mom comes up on video chat, cha cha. But he was also like chasing the cats earlier, going cha cha, <laughs> and then like petting them. But like his pet is so gentle, but it is like rapid fire. <laughs> <laughs> so the cats do not appreciate it. <laughs> it was cha cha, pat pat pat. 
Oh, yeah, that's good. There's so many of those kind of moments. Yeah. Yeah. Cool. So, what are you looking forward to teaching or sharing with Oliver in the future? It can be anything from, like, life knowledge to like teaching him about like manners or teaching him a certain sport or anything passing along my infinite wisdom of the world Mm. (laughs) obviously but you have to narrow it down (laughs) and be specific no i I, i'm excited for everything really like playing catch for the first time or teaching him how to drive or ooh drive that i mean that's a long ways away but i mean it's an you exciting actually, thing you actually taught him how to drive recently oh yeah that's true he, he drove forward one parking space no he has a car toy we don't literally let our infant drive um just get those extenders on the gas and the brake pedal and <laughs> he does like to sit up at the steering wheel though when it's when we're not actually, when we're in like a parking lot, he likes to push all the buttons. He loves the buttons. He likes to call on Star. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, calling on Star. Um, but is there any like, I don't know, because like for me, um, like I guess all of the things that I'm really excited to teach a child. So this is part of why I was really. This is actually the main reason I was really upset initially that we didn't have a girl. Because, like, everything that I was so excited about parenting was about teaching, like, my future daughter to be confident and tough and um, to, like, really know her worth and to, you know, all, all of these different things about that are so challenging to be a woman, you know, I that I really had to learn a lot of them the hard way. I was excited to share that with um, a girl before she had to, like, also learn it the hard way, you know? But it ended up for me that um, what I'm learning along the way is that I actually think there's more of that to teach a boy. Um, Because with a girl, you you just, you're really building them up. But I think with boys, you're... If you don't, there's so much to teach them. If you don't, then as they grow up, it's like a constant untangling. And there's so much that the world like tries to knot up that you also have to untangle for boys. Like that it's okay to be sensitive or cry or, you know, ha- whatever. Like wear pink or something. I mean, you know, <laughs> there's like a million like very simple, like innocent things that boys are taught are like so bad. And also... Not only to be tender, but like also to be kind to girls and to stand up for things that they care about, you know, that they don't have to have a certain like persona. So like, is there anything like that that really matters to you or a certain like issue that really matters to, sh- to impress upon him or like religious belief or like anything like that that's like kind of serious? I mean, I just wanted to be a honest kind-hearted human being who cares about everybody yeah me too i think i think as long as that box is checked then everything else will sort of fall into place yeah i think that you're more of the like actions person and i'm more of the words person like i think that he'll observe through you and then hear speeches (laughs) through me your motivational speeches? <laughs> Do I give motivational speeches? I don't know. But it'll be like, you know, like in Full House at the end when like oh, Bob no. Saget would sit down on the bed and put no. his hand on the daughter's shoulder. I know. And the piano music would start playing in the background <gasps> and he says something really like sweet and sentimental, but it's also motivational and it's like feel good and it's a lesson too. Yeah, that's all you. Am I Bob Saget? I hope so. This is my worst nightmare. <laughs> I've almost finished my gin. <laughs> um, so next, <laughs> next question. I don't want to think about Bob Saget anymore. Okay. Um, if you could have any schedule, what would it be? Like work, fun, life. Like what would your normal like day or week be like? Hours and all that. I mean, I kind of like my schedule right now, really. So you go into work at like between 
7 and 8. Yeah, I usually get there 7.30, quarter till 8. And, then, and I get off anywhere between 3.30 and 4.30, pretty much. Um, yeah, I mean, I, I think that's good. Usually goes by pretty quickly, and then I come home, and it kind of it kind of sucks that I don't always get to say good morning to Oliver, but uh, it's better than before when I was working 12 hours a day and selling for 10 minutes. But, uh, oh, yeah. Yeah, no, yeah, that's, that's good. And then I have the evening to whatever, run errands or... It's nice that I get to have dinner with y'all now. Yeah, it is. And it's nice that I get to cook a real dinner (laughs) now. (laughs) Yeah, no, I I think my schedule right now is pretty solid. You don't wish you could just, like, be home earlier? Like, work half a day? I mean, sure, but I don't mind it either. Okay. Yeah. Like, maybe if you were here and I was at, like, the spa... Or something. Do you think you'd, you'd be into that? Definitely not that. Damn. All right. Well, there goes that proposition. <laughs> no, I'm just kidding. Um. Okay. Okay. Earlier, you said I was the boss. True. <laughs> so when it comes to like making decisions for our son, um, like at what point? Would you either, like, speak up or, it like, so far, you've pretty much been really go with the flow about things and sort of let me take the reins a lot. So, is it that, that you haven't disagreed with me yet or is there a different, like, reason or what's your thought process and tell me about all of that? Really, I think it's just I agree with the things. Uh that's definitely the the number one thing, and yeah. Like, what if I had said to you, "I don't want to vaccinate our child." <laughs> His face is good. <laughs> First, I would send you to like a psychologist or something. <laughs> Scientist, how yeah, about? So, uh, just get you educated, and then hopefully you would um, that it would speak for itself. On that specific topic, though, what do you, what would you do? Any of your friends are any of your friends a part of that? No. And what if one of your friends, like, what if Fabian had been like, "We're not vaccinating"? That would be surprising to me because he's a very smart human being, and his. But just for example. I would. I, I don't know. Send send him some links. You know. Would you? Probably. Do you feel like you can, like, because recently I've talked to you about this, but, like, there are, there's really only, like, one person that, like, is an anti-vax that I actually really like as a person. And I'm like, oh, I previously was like, I can't be friends. (laughs) I can't be friends with someone like that. But now I'm like, how do I move past that? Could you move past that? I'm sure I could. It's just it's uh it's a it's a weird thing because like what was it T- tuberculosis or no it was the measles the measles yeah there were just cases of measles at the local high school here, w- which I feel like is probably the result of and you know not getting their vaccinations yeah. and so that's like yeah. I know I'm yeah. Yeah, but then, like, I know that some of the kids Oliver plays with on a regular basis are not vaccinated. I think right now it's not. No, right now it's more crucial, I think, because he can't have as many vaccines as later. It's true. Like, it's throughout, you know, as they get older, they're able to have different ones, but when they're younger, they haven't had as many. But to me, it was like, well, I'm not going to not let him have friends or and I'm not going to insult people that I like otherwise over it. I forgot actually had another normal friend who I'm pretty sure doesn't vaccinate and we've just never talked about it and I think there might even be another one. In our town it's kind of really big, right? Conspiracy theories are kind of big. Yeah. And and what else is big in our town? Farm animals? 
meth. Yeah, crystal meth, yes. Uh, Coincidence? Well, I, mean, I think it's calmed down some in the last year or so, but came up on my memories recently. They, 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 <laughs> what a good memory. They busted two meth labs in two weeks at the same exact location. They busted one, Jeez. shut it down, and then within the week they built it up again in the same spot and then got shut. So, and then there was that mobile meth lab that got pulled over for like having a tail light out or something. <laughs> they made a meth lab in the back of their van. God, if you're going to have a meth lab, be smart. Make sure your tail lights work. <laughs> Maybe we should have a meth lab. I doubt that. No, we should not have. I should we shouldn't say that. We shouldn't joke about that. No. Uh but no, I love our town. Um, but yeah, we kind of have this weird, like, almost like hippie farm people community. Yeah. So, I I love them for every reason besides the anti-vax movement. But uh, it has kind of seeped into our friend group. But it's not as much the people that you hang around as much as, like, people that I interact with being a stay-at-home mom. Yeah. But it doesn't... I, to me, I felt like I'm not going to deny him friends over it, you know? You feel that? I feel that. Because, I mean, it's like, okay, most likely he's not going to get a disease. Yeah. Yeah. Anyway. All right. All of my horrible humor aside <laughs> that will one day definitely get me in trouble. Um, <laughs> what do you think has been the hardest thing about becoming a parent so far for you? I think it, uh, it depends on the day sometimes, but uh, I think in general, just having the mentality, like he always comes first no matter what, just like, yeah. sometimes I just want to care for you in one way or another, care for myself, and it's like, you, if you can't, if he needs something, you just have to stop and drop everything and go make Roll sure with that it. it, yeah, just... <laughs> Stop, drop, and roll. (laughs) Stop what you're doing, drop everything, and roll with it. Yep. And that's how you put out the fires of parenting. That's good. Is it? It's a good motto. I thought it was really bad, but you said it was good, so... And you rarely give me credit, so... Well, you know, dads like bad jokes or whatever, apparently, so... Oh, yeah. Do you have a dad joke? Gosh, I... I really put you on the spot. No, there, there's the one that I always bust out is what does a nosy pepper do? It gets jalapeno business. <laughs> yeah, I've heard it a hundred times. It was I, a fake laugh. <laughs> what does a fish say when it swims into a wall? What? Damn. <laughs> okay, that was a good one. That one was good. Especially because, guys, I love dams. I have a real thing about dams. She does. I just really, every time we pass one, I'll be like, ooh, look at dam. And then I got to go sit there. And anyways, it's another story about dams. Um, all right. Well, this has been a really great episode. So at the end of each of our episodes, we like to offer a, a parenting tip, a piece of advice or a favorite product we like, or something that we've learned that we could share with our listeners to make parenting a little bit easier for them. So what is your tip of the week? Tip of the week. Um, <laughs> it, should, it should have a, you know. Tip of the week. Yeah. Tip of the week. I think that's good. Uh, well, I guess it specifically goes out to dads because I'm a dad, so that's what I can relate to. But uh, just like, don't forget to allow mom to feel like a human. Aww. You know, whether it's like when I'll take him when I go grocery shopping or whatever and give you an hour of a quiet house or say, hey, go get a coffee or whatever. And it's just like, you know, make sure that there's time in the day where... You don't have to go get a coffee. Yeah, well, don't you don't have to go get a coffee. I don't I think have. you've bust. You've told me to go get a coffee. I'm pretty sure. Okay, but maybe just to refresh my memory, you should tell me again <laughs> this weekend. I'll think about it. <laughs> anyway, sorry. Continue. <laughs> that's I. That's yeah. Whatever I was saying is what I was saying, and that's what I meant. Because why? Why do you have to give mom time to feel human? Well, because like you were saying, you're just a mom all day. You know, when I... I mean, I'm a dad all day, too, but I'm also at work for eight hours, and I'm not here dealing with a 
screaming infant or toddler now or, you know, whatever. Uh, it's like I like to say no one yelled at you when you took a shit. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Well, not, the, not <laughs> today. today no. Not today. <laughs> you have little goblins that follow you around. Hey. <laughs> Sometimes. Hey. Get like, off that that's toilet. That's a story for another day. <laughs> We're weird. <laughs> I'm really into this toilet goblin thing, sorry. <laughs> it's just something I might write about in a book one day. You should. <laughs> you should. But no, I think that's really good. That's really nice of you. Well, you know, I do what I can. But yeah, I think it's important. And like we were saying earlier, I don't think it's always intentional, but the mentality typically is like, oh, mom, you know, mom can handle it or whatever. And I think it's a good idea to say, Dad will handle it and let you do whatever you need to do to, you know, collect yourself. And see, you're nice and caring, but even for our selfish listeners out there, if we have any selfish dads, um, (laughs) I think it's still a good idea because when... I think, like, when, like, I have the hardest days parenting, I'm, like, really shut down and closed off. And, like, I don't want to talk to anyone. I definitely don't want to have sex. I don't want to do, you know, anything fun or nice for others. I don't want to play a game or watch a movie with you. Like, I, you know what I mean? Like, it's like when you have a hard day, you just kind of feel sad and give up a little bit. Sure. And... That's just at the face value, but then there's also, like, resentment that builds and different things. So, yeah, I think that's a really good tip, whether it's to be nice or whether it's for the sake of your marriage or whether it's for the sake of yourself. I think it's a good one. I mean, what is it? Happy happy wife, happy life or whatever? Because, I mean, really, if you're in a bad mood, then, you know, the morale of the house is just down a little bit. Is it? Oh, yeah, for sure. Yeah, Oliver really, like, soaks up my emotions, too. Yeah. If I get stressed out and or worried and I look down at him, he's, like, tugging on my pants, like, with a concerned look on his face. I have to, like, smile and be like, ha, ha, ha. It's fine. <laughs> cool. Well, thanks so much for coming on. Oh, it's my pleasure. <laughs> And I really enjoyed talking to you. I wasn't going to talk to you anyway. But I know. <laughs> it's a joke because I was. Because we lived together. Because uh-huh. we're me, I read. Anyway. Hope everyone has a nice week. Bye. Toodles. <laughs>